If you were able to walk into a room confident that you would be well received, seen, heard, and appreciated by others, and all it took was a few changes in how you navigate your everyday relationships, would you be willing to make those changes? It is possible to be both fully authentic and to experience the best relationships of your life. Now, here is the host of Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffin Stone. Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you're here today. The topic for today is overcoming stress. And I think that speaks to every single one of us. It, it clearly has to. I've never met anybody that doesn't have stress. So I'm Michaela Gaffin Stone. I'm a board certified behavior analyst. I'm also a nutrition coach, and I have a whole bunch of other certifications as well. If you ever you're interested, I'll try and list them all, but you got to ask for that one because that's going to be a long list. In fact, my kids suggested that I make a bedspread made out of all the certificates that I have, you know, get a photo of that and have a bedspread made. I might do that one day just for fun. So stress. Stress is the fuel that gets you doing things. It's the fuel of life. But we spend a lot of time in de-stress. So that's when you've got so much stress, you're not handling it right, you're not using it as a fuel, it's blocking up and you're becoming sort of congested, if you will, heading towards overwhelm. So would you like to discover today the path to overcoming that kind of stress? Because we're gonna look at ways today that stress affects you and I'm gonna offer some suggestions for some changes you can make, some tweaks. That's what I do in behavior change, right? So I'm gonna be offering you that and I have a special free offer for you a little bit later in the show. And this is not something that's been offered before because it's a, a very short program that's coming up. Stay tuned, I think you're gonna love it. And it fits in very nicely with overcoming stress. So how cool is that? So do you find yourself battling from Monday to Friday? Is that your experience every week? Do you dread Mondays starting Sunday? Does that happen? then you might have a good idea that a lot of your stress is work-related or school-related. It's something from Monday to Friday, right? But there's also stress that happens all the time and you don't even really notice it. It just kind of underlies your life, if you will. It's this thread that's going on. And you only find those things when you tend to do a deep dive. And ideally, you need to have somebody help you with that to ask you the questions that you won't think of. If you could think of it for yourself, you'd have done it already, right? It's very hard for us to do these things for ourselves. That's why good coaches have coaches. You need to have somebody to help you with this. So that's to find the, the sort of underlying stress that just kind of saps your energy away every day. But do you also have aches and pains maybe that there's no clear cause for it? You're just kind of uh, not feeling great. Do you have mood swings? These are also symptoms of having chronic stress. So let's dive into that today and find out which type of stress are you dealing from? And do, do you know where you're stressed? Are you aware of it? Or is it just something that happens briefly and goes away again? If it does, you're very, very lucky. So let's have a look at, first of all, human design. I said, what now? Yeah, I did. I said human design because it's a great place to start. So if you don't already have your chart, first of all, what happened? Secondly, go over to my website, which is www.gaffenstone.com, G-A-F-F-E-N, stone.com, and get your chart. You can create it and download it for free. And then you'll have a better idea of whether or when I'm talking to you, because I'm about to go through the energy types and how stress shows up for those particular energy types. That's one place for us to start. And I think it's, uh, it's very cool because so far I've found people recognize themselves when I do this. So listen, get your notes, see what you think. Manifestors are the first people we'll start with. That's 8% of the world's population. So if you're a manifestor, there's not that many of you. You're designed to initiate, to start new things and to impact others. And you do this without necessarily telling them you're gonna do it. So 
when you don't let people know what's happening, that can be a source of stress for you coming from them. When people don't know what you're doing, they get very concerned. They feel left behind. They feel abandoned in some way. And when you don't know a thing, the human mind will invariably fill it in with a story. Something will be put in there because we can't handle voids, right? There's no gap. So we're always going to put a story in there and the human mind will automatically go to something negative. So if you are prepared to put up with that, okay, but it is a source of stress for you because people will come after you wanting to know what you're doing. Another source of stress for the manifester is that they will feel controlled or restricted from acting as autonomously as they want to. You want to be independent. You want to do your own thing. You want to be running off into the sunset with nobody to bother you, but human society doesn't work that way. So that can be very stressful for you, the manifester. And a lot will depend on how you grew up, how your parents were with you, um, as to how keenly you feel that lack of independence. So a lack of recognition for that need of freedom can also be very stressful for you. So you have a lot of pressure to conform to society, their expectations or you know the general expectations, or to follow traditional structures. That doesn't fit in with your design though, Mr. or Mrs. Manifesta. That's not your style, right? You need to innovate. So surround yourself with people who will allow for this, will encourage this, can help you with it. You know, you need people around you that can work with you as a team. You're the visionary. Where are your managers? That's the question for a manifesto. And that's where lots of stress can come in is if you're trying to be a manager when actually you're a visionary, um, you're in the wrong place. So that's human design for manifestors. They're generators. Well, generators, you're here to respond to life. You're here to respond to opportunities, to find out what lights you up and to get in there, to really do the things that you love. That truly is 70% of the world's population needs to be doing this. And stress often comes from feeling stuck in situations that simply aren't part of your passion or your interest. And that happens when you've said yes too quickly and you end up saying yes to things that are really no for you. And the more you say yes to something that's not for you, the less room you have for the stuff that really lights you up. And that is a whole spiral into stress right? That's so tough. And being in environments where you can't use your energy productively or where you're not being heard. Okay. Every human being wants to be seen and heard. For generators, it's crucial. You have to be heard and, and people need to acknowledge you. And when you're in an environment where that's not happening, that is another source of pretty deep stress for a generator. Not having enough variety or simulation in your life, that brings out a whole lot of restlessness, which is a sort of, it's, it's a sign of stress, right? If you're restless, you're clearly not in a happy space. You're, you're wanting something, missing something, um, frustrated by something. And there's the key word for a generator. You're frustrated. You're wanting to be elsewhere and you're stuck. That's a very tough thing, particularly for pure generators. So, Moving on, and someone in the chat just said, me, never frustrated. And I happen to know that person is a generator and I happen to know that's not true. <laughs> so manifesting generators, this is uh, a hybrid between manifester and pure generators. And they have the traits of both manifestors and generators, oddly enough. So this stress can come from a combination of the things I've just said not being in the right place, not being heard, not being allowed to do the things you want to do, being held back by people because they don't understand. Manifestors and manifesting generators move quicker than the rest of the designs, the rest of the energy types. It's, it's simply how they operate. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, it's a thing. So it is a bad thing when you feel stressed by it though. And that's when you're unable to move quickly and efficiently through tasks and you're forced to follow somebody else's very linear path. 
So manifestors, for example, you could start a four year degree and after six months say, you know what, I'm done, I'm good. I know everything I need to know from this. Let me move on to something else. And everybody else is having a conniption because you need to do four years, not six months. But for you, the manifester, you've already moved on. You've got everything you need. That can be stressful because people will pull you back to conform and you're not here to conform. Manifesting generators are here to stir stuff up and to make things happen. They're not here to conform the way people would like them to. So that can be very stressful. When people try and confine you to a role, one role, manifestors and manifesting generators jump from thing to thing. They don't stay in one place. And that would be really difficult to do and very stressful, funnily enough. It's, it's not very um, productive either. So autonomy is necessary for the manifesting generator as well. Moving on to the next energy type, we have projectors. Now there are different types of projectors, but I'm just gonna go with an overall one here. Otherwise I'll be uh, in human design all day and we're not doing that today. So projectors are here to guide and direct the energy from others. This is where you can oversee systems and you can see how things need to change, where things would improve, and you have that ability. The stress comes when that ability is not recognized and, and or undervalued, and you can't really use your unique insight then. It doesn't go well. A projector who's trying to help, who will bring their knowledge forward, is gonna be perceived as bossy, interfering, micromanaging, all kinds of things, because they haven't been recognized and invited. And it's really key that that happens. So being in an environment where you will be recognized and appreciated is actually important. It's not a vanity, it's necessary. You can be overshadowed by louder voices as a projector. And that is also, of course, very stressful. You end up overwhelmed trying to keep up with the energy of the generators around you, which is 70%, right? Or feeling pressured to work long hours when that's not how it works for you as a projector. All these things are causes for stress. And then finally, I think I have enough time before the break to go into reflectors. Rare and unique, although I have worked with five so far, I'm delighted to say, Reflectors literally reflect the health of the community they're in and the vitality of that community. So their stress comes from feeling disconnected or out of sync with that environment. And reflectors can feel stressed when they're surrounded by negativity, can't we all? Um, when they're feeling unable to find a sense of belonging within that community, that's very difficult. And a lack of clarity or uncertainty about their own identity which can, can and does happen with reflectors, can also be a source of stress. And then not knowing your purpose or feeling like you don't know your purpose is a source of stress for all of the designs, but especially for a reflector. It's, it's very tough to navigate life when you're not really quite sure of where you're going with things and what your purpose is. So that's a quick roundup of all the energy types and where stress starts for those people, before you even look at external events and you know what's happening at your workplace and so on, this is just how you operate. Stress comes from there. So when we come back after the break, we'll go into more sources of stress and what they look like and how you can deal with them. And I do have that special offer coming up very soon, so don't go away. I hope you're making notes. Stay tuned to Navigating Complicated Relationships. I'm your host, Michaela Gaffinstone, and I will see you in just a minute. What if your relationships could be a source of delight instead of a source of struggle? In a world where human interactions are anything but straightforward, tuning in to Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffinstone will offer you insights, tools, and a whole new level of understanding for you to use right now. Listen for Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffinstone. Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin Stone. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Mickey at gaffinstone.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I'm so glad you're still here. And I love getting emails. So do send me an email at Mickey, M-I-K-K-I, at gaffinstone.com, G-A-F-F-E-N, stone like a rock, dot com. Do email me. Let me know what you think of the show. Ask me any questions that you have. Give me any comments that you have. And if there's subjects you'd like covered in the weeks coming up, then let me know that too. I will respond. So let's do that thing. Now, stress comes in different forms, obviously, and some of it is chronic. Some of, you know, it's just, it's there all the time, like a job that you can't stand. In fact, during the break, someone put in the chat that their son's a projector, and I nailed it with exactly why he just left a new job. And it, it is that serious when things are against your design. You just, you, you're kind of trying to push a door open that needs to be pulled. It just isn't going to work. And sometimes you have to get out of there. Sometimes you can do the job a little differently. Depends on the stress levels quite often, right? So there's one client <clears throat> that, I, excuse me, <clears throat> there's one client who uh, is doing a program with me right now on learning about emotional eating and how things are, are sort of set up for her. Like she didn't know that she had emotional eating when we started this program. It was all about nutrition. And she's a doctor and she works nights. So this doctor typically sort of gets access to food in the, the staff cafeteria, but isn't very keen on what's there quite often. And then she had a realization when she started taking her food in with her to work that she'd got this stress about the food that she would have access to and whether it would be gone by the time she could get there and whether the good stuff would be gone, whether there was, you, you know, she just stressed over whether she was gonna get food or not. Now, the interesting thing is, this is someone who can fast without any problems. She can do a fast. So what's the issue with the food not being there? Well, I'm not gonna go into the whole subject because it's her story, but suffice it to say for now that she discovered a significant emotional connection to going without food. And that was enlightening to her. She had no idea that this was operating all the time for her. She, she just decided when to eat from that space. That was an incredible understanding and a place where behavior change can come in. You can start doing different things and relieve that particular stress. So that was a chronic stress that we uncovered. And it can take years to find those things or it can take a few moments. It depends on who you're talking to, right? So let's identify some of those stress triggers. Is it your home environment? Is somebody in your home being disruptive or difficult to live with? Is it your work environment? Is it things on the world stage? Any of those things can cause huge stress and, and it's ongoing. If it's things that are happening out in the world, can you protect yourself from that in some way? Like full disclosure here, I haven't watched the news since 2016 and have no intention of doing so because it's such a negative source of misinformation. And I don't care which channel you watch, they're all doing it. This is media and manipulating people in a, an unscrupulous way and causing all kinds of problems where they could be a source for good and they're not. So they're a source of stress for me I don't watch them. I've taken that out of my 
environment, if you will. And boy, I'm a lot better off for it. So is that something you need to do? Are you hooked into the news? Are you watching every dire story that they can give you? Because I can tell you from uh, having experienced a situation where news cameras were there, I was in these, the situation and then I saw it later on television and what they showed was not an accurate representation. They made the situation look much bigger than it was. I was there and I saw that and I don't think it's an isolated incident. So maybe you want to rethink that, for example. But from work deadlines to family conflicts, there are stresses all over the place. So how do you know how your level of stress is doing? Well, so th there's a lot of physical symptoms that can come up, for example, because stress releases cortisol. And if you have that chronically, then you're probably one of the people who say, you know, I have this weight around the middle and I cannot get rid of it. It doesn't matter what I do. I've tried all these things. Well, the secret thing that you haven't tried is fixing the stress factor because cortisol tells the body, hang on to that. We might need it there's a problem coming. There's a saber tooth tiger or something we might have to heal. You know, that, that body message is don't release any fat. So if you're chronically stressed, that's likely to be something that you find. Um, there's also adrenaline. Now adrenaline, that's going to mess with your sleep. Cortisol is going to mess with your sleep. Have you experienced messed up sleep? Are you chronically insomniac? Well, yeah, stress is likely to be a cause of that. So it's something that you're going to want to find. Where are your biggest sources of stress? Where are your continuous sources of stress? And how are you going to start, start to dissolve those? It is possible, but it takes a bit of work. So let's look at some more physical symptoms first. Muscle tension. Do you know anybody with their shoulders up to their ears who's like literally walking around like that? Because I see that sometimes. And you can't breathe properly from that space. So if you're somebody whose muscles are very tense, you find your fists are clutched and you don't really mean to, then breathing is really helpful for this. And yes, I know we all breathe, but five to a count of five in, hold for five, out for five, pause, do it again and do that five times. That's the kind of breathing I'm talking about. Because when you're tense and you're breathing in a shallow, rapid way, then your body gets the signal, we're ready to run, like this is bad, we've got a big problem here, this is, mm -mm, this is not good. So your cortisol's there, you're giving off the whole idea of being prey to your body, right? Something's about to eat me. And, and that's just going to keep you in a state of heightened stress, where the breathing can put you into more of a a predator breath, if you like, but certainly you're in the space of nothing's chasing me, nothing's going to eat me, everything's good, and your body calms down, the cortisol calms down, and you can operate from a much better space. Digestive issues are next. Stress affects the digestive system, sure it does. You can have stomach aches, cramps, diarrhea, or go the other way and have constipation. If you have something like irritable bowel syndrome, stress makes it much worse. And I'm pretty sure if you have IBS, you already know that. I'm not telling you a new thing, but you might not have thought about it too much because, you know, we tend to get medications first and then looking at lifestyle later, if ever. So I invite you to consider your stress at this point. Changes in appetite can happen too. Some people will undereat. You know, my mom used to stop eating if she was stressed and, you know, nothing would make her eat until she got rid of whatever was stressing her. I'm the other way. I'll eat. <laughs> like I'm very happy to eat if I'm stressed. Uh, in fact, not, nothing much stops me from eating. So, you know, very different responses to the same thing. But where do you seek comfort in food? Because that is the case for pretty much everybody who was ever a kid that scraped their knee, right? Because when you're little, you're running along, you fall over, scrape your knee. Your parents don't want to see you upset. They don't want to see you hurting. So they give you an ice cream or a cookie or something. There, there, don't cry. Here, have this. You'll feel better. And you learn from very early on that things that are given as a treat, things that are given as a reward are generally 
full of sugar and fat and they're edible fairly obviously and and this is something you now associate with comfort and with love so later in life you're upset about something i just need a tub of ben and jerry's or i've had a tough day i'm just gonna eat that packet of cookies right so do you know though where your links are a client of mine who is from europe but lives in california was talking to me one day about the pastries that she really enjoys and she said i don't like the american pastries they're too sweet but I found a place where I can get European pastries and they're just right. I said, oh, that, that's interesting. When do you typically go for those? And she said, well, they remind me of home. So, you know, I, I like to eat them to remind me of home. And then we dove a little deeper and the connection was when she missed home, she would eat pastries and that would be her connection. But you know how long that lasts? That as long as the pastry. But picking up the phone and calling home, E.T., will absolutely fix what ails you because the food wasn't the problem. Missing the people at home was the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So we often eat our feelings and it cannot work because it's not what's the problem. You know, it's not a need for a pastry. It's a need for the connection. So I've already mentioned sleep disturbances, but you can also have fatigue during the day and irritability. Would that be you? Maybe. Anyway, some people don't handle chronic lack of sleep very well, do they? So there's different things you can do for your sleep. And we can get into that later if there's time, but you know about turning off things with blue light, computer screens and so on, read a book, don't watch TV when you go to bed, that kind of thing. Um, prolonged stress can also lead to heart problems, which if you think about it, you're making the heart work as though it's having to run from a saber toothed tiger. So yeah, it gets kind of tired. It gets worn out and that is an issue. Your blood pressure can be triggered by stress. Um, it's the body's fight or flight response. So all of those things lead to a less healthy you a less energetic you, and someone who's less able to cope with stress. Funnily enough, it becomes a circle. If you're stressed out and you're not handling any of these, you're not looking at how to offload them, then, and, and I don't mean from a place of, yeah, well, that's easy for you to say, but I can't do anything. If you start off with, I can't do anything, then you're right, you're stuck. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do because you don't think there is. But if you're open, to finding ways to offload that stress and curious about what it would be like not to feel that way, then yes, that's something you can work on. And of course, I'm gonna suggest that you have a coach like me to work with you because I can help you with this. this. This is my jam, right? So think about the options and how you would like to offload the stress that you can. Some stress is necessary for life, distress is not it tends to shorten it. So we're gonna to go to a break very shortly. And when we come back, I'm gonna let you know about that special offer that I keep mentioning. It's free, so don't worry about cost. And it'll take ooh, a chunk of time on two days for you to get some incredible value from a really powerful individual. I will tell you about this after the break. So make your notes. Find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. Just look up Michaela Gaffinstone and there I am. You can get your chart on my website if you haven't already and Tut and Tisk if you haven't, but the website is gaffinstone.com and I will see you very shortly after the break. Don't go away. What if your relationships could be a source of delight instead of a source of struggle? In a world where human interactions are anything but straightforward, tuning in to Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffin-Stone will offer you insights, tools, and a whole new level of understanding for you to use right now. Listen for Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin-Stone, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com.
How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin Stone. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Mickey at gaffinstone.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I'm so glad you're still here. You're listening to Michaela Gaffin Stone, and this is Navigating Complicated Relationships. One of the most complicated things we can navigate really is stress because it comes at you from so many directions. It's constant and it's varied and it takes different shapes each day. There's so many different stresses. And did you know that a lot of your stress comes from how you perceive it? Now that's, I'm sure some people got outraged by that just then, but think about it. An event is only an event until you make it mean something, until you give it a significance in your life. And that's up to you to a large extent on whether that significance is full on just all out stress or if it's a little bit stressful, but there's a way with, to work with this or it's, it's a disaster or it's great. Like, who knows? Only you do. You're the person who has that perception. So an event is just an event until you give it a meaning. And let me give you an example of that. And it, it might be a bit of a stark example, but it, it works. So you hear that someone died. Now that is an event. It happens to everybody eventually, but you don't know who the person is. So while you can feel, you know, oh, that, that's a shame somebody died. But it doesn't impact you the way it does if it's someone close to you or if it's somebody that you don't like or it's somebody who, you know, has a different meaning for you. Each type of meaning will carry a different significance with it. And your perception of that event is based on your meaning, right? So taking that into daily events, life events, stress a lot of times will come from the meaning you give it. How hopeless are you? Do you have a negative mindset about this? Is it all terrible and it's never going to get better? Is it always you that has the problem? That is called a negative mindset. And one of the things that um, is useful to know is your brain has something called a reticular activating system. Don't worry about the title. I kind of like saying it, though reticular activating system. And what this does is it filters the environment, the information from the environment, and it gives you what you focus on because you cannot receive all the information that's in the environment. It's too much. The brain can't manage all of that. So it selects the things you focus on, which is why if you've bought a red car, when you go out in your red car, suddenly the world and his dog is driving a red car right? They're everywhere. They're parked everywhere. You, you're tripping over them pretty much because your brain has said, oh, hey, you like red cars. Here you go. And it gives you more. So if you're focusing on things with a negative outlook, this is terrible. All the bad things happen to me. Nothing's good, et cetera, et cetera. The reticular activating system does not judge this. It doesn't weigh it up and make a decision. It's simple response of, okay, here you go, and it gives you more to focus on that's negative. The other thing that that part of the brain does is it triggers behaviors that you already have in your repertoire, it's nothing new, but it'll trigger the behavior that gets you more of what you're focusing on. So if you're worried about self-sabotage and nothing ever works out for you, you never get to finish things and you know that's the way life is, 
then you will start taking the behaviors or continue to take the behaviors that cause that. You will do the things to make that happen. And that's exactly how your focus works. You've heard of law of the attraction. Well, this is a way to explain it to you from your brain's perspective, right? This is how your brain is helping you to navigate. And a lot of your behaviors are automatic. It's in the subconscious. If you had to make a decision, like I move my hands when I talk, if I had to make a decision every time I wanted to move a hand, I, I wouldn't be able to do other things. You, you have to be able to run a whole lot of programs on automatic and your, or your subconscious, including your reticular activating system, are going to kick in and say, don't worry, we've got you. We'll keep getting you the results you've always had. We'll keep doing the same things. This is fine. You know, we'll, we'll do that. And that's what happens. So what am I going to suggest? Cultivating a positive mindset. Focus on but up, finding optimism, creating optimism, and gratitude. And by gratitude, I mean, what, what are you delighted with when you wake up in the morning? You know, um, Demo Casanova, who is a Grammy award-winning producer, I was listening to him give a talk once and he said, you know, every morning I start with gratitude. I look up at the ceiling and I sell, say, well, it ain't dirt. <laughs> that's his idea of optimism. Well, you know, that's cool. He's not wrong. It's, it's good, right? You're alive. So what would that look like for you? Can you find five things around you right now that you're really thrilled or in your life or that you have access to or that you're able to do? Do you appreciate your mobility if you have full mobility? Do you appreciate your ability to do things that other people maybe can't? What, what is it for you? Start thinking about that. Make yourself a nice long list. You can never have that list too long. And then reframe negative thoughts into positive ones. Like instead of this always happens to me, it could be, huh, I'm really curious. I, I see this a lot. I wonder what, what can I learn from this? What is the good stuff in here? Because, you know, life is not smooth for any of us. Those smooth bits that you might get from time to time, it's a coffee break. It's not life. Life happens where all the chopping and changing is. That's where you learn things, right? So I can tell you a whole lot of this, but if you don't experience it, it might not mean anything to you. It's the learning, it's the choppiness that does it for you. So can you find silver linings? I don't really mean to be a Pollyanna, but you know, can you find what the good thing is about that? Because events are seldom all negative. I, I can't think of something that I can find where there's nothing positive there. And if you are really stuck with your negative mindset, I'm gonna say find some Mr. Rogers neighborhood and watch a few episodes of that because that man embodied finding the positive in everything. He really, really, truly did. So I did mention that I have this offer for you that I want to extend to you. I have a mentor by the name of Nyurka, N-I-U-R-K-A, Nyurka. And she's an incredible human being. She was working with Tony Robbins when she was just 19 took on Wall Street, all kinds of things. And this woman is motivating to the nth degree. I love to spend time in her environment and I find she's very uplifting. Now, she has given me the opportunity to pass to you, listeners, a free registration with an option to upgrade, yes, but there is a free registration for two days of Ask and Receive. And what this means is asking important, very clear questions so that you get the answer you're looking for and you get to move forward. Now, I've tested this and it works. Again, it's to do with using the subconscious because if you could consciously make things change, if you could consciously come up with new answers, then you, know, you wouldn't be asking the question now. You wouldn't have the situation now. You'd already have your answer. So the answer needs to come from the subconscious. And Nyoka is a master at tapping into that and showing you how to do it. 
So if you're interested in Ask and Receive, then just send me a quick message on Facebook, Ask and Receive, and I will send you the link so that you can have free access to that. If you choose to upgrade, which means you have longer sessions and you get to keep the recordings, it's $97. But if you've not experienced Nyoka yet, I heartily, heartily recommend that you try this. And I'll see you there because I'm going to be there. So that's the freebie for you. And once again, I'll spell her name, N-I-U-R-K-A, Nyoka. And contact me on Facebook. Just send me a comment saying that you want to ask and receive or message me. And you can have that, okay? So yay, it's a really cool gift, I assure you. I'm, I'm psyched to be able to offer this to you. So let's get back to other things you can do with stress, how you can manage it. Well, managing your expectations is a really good way to reduce a whole lot of stress. If you are someone who puts your expectations onto other people, like you want them to do a certain thing by a certain time in a certain way, you're looking for perfection. And it often is a perfectionist that will do this. They do it to themselves, but they also do it to other people. Well, you kind of lost it when you went to the other people because you cannot control what somebody else does. You may have the best answer in the world to their problem, but you cannot make them use it. And you cannot make them do things the way you want them done. It's simply not possible. And it's very, very stressful for you and for them. So realizing that that is simply a role you need to give a seat to somewhere else, tell it to sit down and not bother you because you cannot organize somebody else to that degree. You cannot make them do things. And the same thing goes if you're somebody who gives advice. You may have superb advice, and I, I wouldn't question it for a moment. However, if you give the advice and expect people to take it, you are going to be seriously stressed out. Like, that is not the way to go. Advice is like a gift. Once you've given it, it's not yours anymore. Let it go. I was, I was singing in my head earlier on, you know, let it go, let it go. Anyway, I, I won't inflict that on you now. But where can you let go of expectations? And where are you being really harsh on yourself? Do you demand that you're perfect all the time? I know a few people that do that and it's, it's very stressful. And it's stressful for the people around them to see that happening and not be able to help. So some of this stress that we get stuck in is kind of self-created. It doesn't have to be that way. You can choose to do something about it. And one step would be coming to listen to Nyoka and, and do some work with her in the workshop. Another one is contacting me and we can have a little conversation, if you like, about what kind of things would you like to work on? And let's see if I can point you in a direction that would help you. Or maybe I'm in the direction that would help you. I don't know unless we talk, right? This is not a, a pressure thing. This is just how can we relieve your stress? How can we make it so that you can function at a more optimal level every day rather than fighting through the stress just to get things done? That is such a tough way to start your day. If you are looking at stress before you even move and then you have a coffee, which is a stimulant and that's going to get your heart rate going and you're, you're arriving stressed and then you get this blood sugar crash and you need more coffee or donuts or something to up the sugar your body is in a state of stress from the coffee and the sugar too. So there's, there's so many things that once you start unraveling some pieces of stress, other ones are much easier to find and to let go of. We have, actually I have loads more to go through and I'm not gonna be able to do it all today, but I do have more after the break. So you are listening to Michaela Gaffin Stone on Navigating Complicated Relationships here on the Inspired Choices Network. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a minute. What if your relationships could be a source of delight instead of a source of struggle? In a world where human interactions are anything but straightforward, tuning in to Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffin Stone will offer you insights, tools, and a whole new level of understanding for you to use right now. 
Listen for Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin Stone. Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin Stone. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Mickey at GaffinStone.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. This episode is going so fast for me. I hope you're able to keep up and make notes and do all those things. And if you're not, well, you already know we're on so many platforms. I think it's 450. It might be more. You can find us on Audible, iHeartRadio, Spotify, all kinds of places. So go back, listen again, make more notes if you need to. There's still more information for you. And let me know if this is helpful, right? Find me on Facebook and let me know or email me because I, I do like the feedback. So mindfulness and meditation are tools that people will often bring up for stress management. And I'm no exception. It is something that helps to promote relaxation. So long as you're not kind of gritting your teeth and saying, can't think, can't think, can't think. That, that is a, a misunderstanding of meditation. You cannot stop thoughts any more than you can stop a wave in the ocean. It's not possible. But you don't have to follow them and get stuck with them. That's where meditation comes in. It's just noticing it, letting it go. Noticing it, letting it go. Focus on your breathing. And all of that will help you to sort of calm down all those physical signals that there's a panic on. And when those physical signals are calming down, then your brain can start to function better. So that's the benefit of doing meditation. And for many people, depending on human design also, that's where the insight and the, the brilliant ideas drop in, is during something like meditation. So it's, it's very helpful to do that. If you can try it for even 10 minutes, that's very cool. And once you've tried it a couple of times, try it in a noisy place too, because you don't have to have silence for meditation. You just need to be able to control you in, in you know, you could be in Starbucks if you like, it doesn't matter. But can you control your breathing? Can you focus on that breath? Can you let those thoughts go? That's something for you to work with without stress, right? Don't stress over it. That's, that would be ironic in the extreme. Another thing that can help is exercise. You know, exercise is going to use up some of that cortisol and it's going to give you more clarity of thought. And there's a lot of science to back that up. So different types of workouts are great. Depending on your level of fitness now and your interest, Pilates is a wonderful place to start because it focuses on core strength and on flexibility of movement. Yoga is great for flexibility to, to uh, a degree also strength. I prefer Pilates for that myself, but that's your choice. Or you could go running if that works for you. I'm not a runner, so I often joke if a bear around here gets hungry, it's got lunch because I ain't running. Anyway, the next thing that I'd like to get to is nutrition, right? If you're eating lots of fast food and it's full of chemicals, it's full of Oh, I can't even list them, but it, it's full of things that will also raise your heart rate, such as MSG, monosodium glutamate. It's an appetite enhancer and it will cause you to want to eat more food. The other thing is when you're eating food that has little or no nutritional value in it, the body doesn't know what to do with this thing. There's calories, yes, but there's nothing here I can repair a body with, right? It has the wrong tools. So it has to store those somewhere. And guess where that's going to be? A chunk of it is going to get stored in the fat because the body cannot just pass all that stuff out. The kidneys are not designed to handle chemicals that you clean your wall with before you paint. And yet there are people who will give their kids breakfast cereal that has exactly that chemical in. If you want to look it up, it's called trisodium phosphate. Check out where that is. But that's also sold in places like Home Depot to clean your walls. So when you're eating food that contains those, those kinds of ingredients, you are stressing your body big time and your body and your mind, your brain are connected. So when you when one of them is stressed, the other one is going to show the signs. 
so that it's not just what's happening around you or with you if you want to say to you it's it's not just that it's also it's your perception and it's the quality of food that you're consuming the stuff you're drinking i can tell you no one needs a neon drink that's chock full of artificial electrolytes you simply don't it's not a healthy thing it's not helpful and your body has no idea what to do with it and that's another source of stress right so you can help yourself by drinking more water drinking things that don't have artificial additives in sugars and sweeteners are awful for the body we, you know eating a whole fruit is is great because you have other things with the sugar but eating refined sugars that is a disaster for your body did you know there are 257 names of sugar the reason for that isn't because it's healthy and good for you the reason for that is that there's a few but one of the big ones is when you look at the food label on a package of food product you're going to have the sort of calories and what have you down one side that's not really the interesting part because they can play with that did you know that labels can have up to 20 percent of uh an incorrect number on there so they're going to say there's 20 percent less calories than there are right and the same goes for other things trans fats if you have less than half a gram of trans fat you can say it's zero on the label so look at how many portions there are if there's 13 portions in a tiny bag you got your answer that's why sugar 257 names because if you have eight different kinds of sugar in a product they're going to come way lower down on the list it looks like it's insignificant it looks like you're not having that much sugar and actually you really really are so there's all kinds of tricks out there your best bet to reduce stress from food is to find your way to eating whole food that actually resembles what it was you know a carrot is a carrot meat comes from an animal it's not 3d printed it's not artificial fake stuff it comes from an animal that hopefully was pasture raised right if you have a farm nearby check them because when you're eating meat that's full of stress hormones guess what you're getting they're stress hormones and you're also getting the whole result of a sick animal if you have something that's been raised in the um, mass produced way so all of these things and more can cause stress i invite you to have a look at where can you make some changes where would you like to make some changes to reduce that stress can you offload some things that are on your to-do list can you cr just cross them off and say never mind I, i'm just not interested can you pick just between one and three things per day to focus on and not more and give yourself big kudos when you get them you know you, your brain wants that dopamine hit of yes i did it it doesn't need the stress of cortisol and adrenaline so i hope i've given you some ideas for today remember there's sleep there's food there's what you're drinking there's how you think about things there's the people that you're surrounded by there's the physical environment is it cluttered is it is it attractive is it stressful because you have an inbox that's three feet high? You, do, do people have those now? I guess it would be the, um, the inbox in your email list, right? What's your number for that? I happen to know somebody who's very keen on getting rid of all the emails as soon as possible. And then I know others, uh, I might be one of them, who has a lot of emails in there. So is that a source of stress for you or does it not bother you? Evaluate. Look at all the different areas of your life and see what's the easiest thing you can offload. I invite you to go do that as soon as possible. Meanwhile, email me, find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram, and I am very responsive. I'm happy to come talk to you. Let me know what worked, what was interesting, what was new, and what you'd like to try. In the meantime, I will see you next week. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to the Navigating Complicated Relationship Show. Makayla returns Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember every relationship is a journey. And with the right tools, you can create stronger, more fulfilling connections.